All right, here are solutions to problem 53 off the math subject GRE practice test. Uh, this problem, this problem's a disaster. This problem, I think, uh, what, 13 or 14% of people, some low number like that, got it right on the test. So what you should do is throw a dart and choose one of these answers and uh, take your one in five chance and move on to 54, which is a hell of a lot easier. Uh, but that's probably not what you want out of this video. You probably want me to solve this problem, so I will. Uh, the... I don't know, hint, I guess, something that you might have done if you were one of those 13% that got it right, realistically, that could have just been a guess, is maybe you'd recognize fundamental theorem of calculus going on here. I have a function that is defined as the integral of zero to x of some other function. Um, and this function, g of x, is three times continuously differentiable. So there's some idea of the derivative of this integral over here. And when you see derivative of integral or integral of derivative, you might be thinking fundamental theorem of calculus. The form that you'll want, the version of the fundamental theorem of calculus that's relevant to this problem, talks about what happens when you take the derivative of, the derivative with respect to x, of the integral from 0 to x of, call it f of y dy in this case. Uh, wow, exciting soccer game going on in the background. I'm not a big soccer fan. but Anyways, uh, when you see this written in textbooks, usually they use the dummy variable t in here instead of y. But I wrote y is just so that it would correspond with this problem here. Uh, England, Iceland, if you're curious, is the game that I'm watching, and crazy little Iceland just tied it up. Anyways, uh, so what we're going to do to solve this is we're going to stare at this guy and try to figure out g prime of x. What's the derivative of this guy? It's not quite a straightforward application of the fundamental theorem of calculus, but if we rewrite this function g of x in a slightly different form, then we'll be able to apply our fundamental theorem of calculus here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that g of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function f of y here and distribute it into these parentheses. So I got y times f of y minus x times f of y. But instead of writing minus x times f of y, I'm going to note that my variable of integration here uh, is y, right, f of y dy. So I'll split this up into two different integrals, first of all. Uh, and then, since my variable of integration is y, this x right here essentially just acts like a constant, so I can pull it out in front of the integral. I get x times the integral from 0 to x of, and then all I would have left would be f of y dy. So all I've done is rewritten this function right here, uh, distributing and then pulling out constants and breaking up integrals. Nothing too fancy so far. And now what I'm going to try to do is take the derivative of this guy. What is g prime of x? Why do I want to know what g prime of x is? Well, I know g is three times continuously differentiable. So maybe if I could find g triple prime of x, I could stare at it and see uh, if it relies upon f prime of x or f double prime of x or f five primes of x or who knows. And that would help me figure out which of these answers is right. So let's figure it out. g prime of x. Well, my first integral right here is the integral from 0 to x of y f of y dy. You can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. You can, the way you can think about it is instead of y times f of y, pretend this thing right here is h of y. This is just some function with the variable y, right? Maybe f of y is sine of x times e to the x squared. Fine. Then, wait, f of y would be sine of y times e to the y squared. Whatever. Make up whatever function you want with y. Uh, then multiply that function by y and you define some new function in terms of y. This whole thing right here is just a function in terms of y. Don't call it the letter f, call it the letter h if you want. Uh, and then maybe you can see that really what I have written here in my first integral is exactly what I have right here. And therefore the derivative of, because I'm taking the derivative of both sides of this equation, would just be equal to what's in the integrand here, y, uh, no x, times f of x. Uh, and I'm changing the variable here because when I take the derivative of the integral, the y is changed into the x's. I guess that's the easiest way to say that. What about over here? What if I take the derivative of this guy? Well, this is the derivative of a product of two things. One of them is x, the other one is this integral here. So if I'm taking the derivative of a product, I've got to use the product rule. The derivative of f times g, I shouldn't even use those letters because there's f's and g's in this problem, is the derivative of this x right here, which is just 1, times the derivative of, oh, sorry, times, leave the second one alone, the integral from 0 to x of f of y dy uh, plus, and now leave the first function alone, this x right here, 
and take the derivative of the second guy. So the derivative of the integral from zero to x of f of y dy. Wait, that's this thing again. The derivative of, with respect to x, the integral from zero to x of f of y dy. That's exactly equal to f of x. So I get this right here. But wait a minute, now I got an f of x f of x here minus an x f of x over here. So I can cancel those two guys out and I can say that g prime of x is just equal to, let's see, this is gone, this is gone. I have negative the integral from zero to x of f of y dy. So the first derivative is equal to this thing right here. I'm not, I don't want the first derivative, I want the third derivative. Well, the good news is it's pretty easy from here on out. The second derivative would just be the derivative of this guy, which I can leave the negative alone, pull out that negative constant. And then I'm asking what is the derivative with respect to x of the integral from zero to x of f of y dy. Wait, that's exactly what I have in green right here. So that'd be equal to f of x. Applying that fundamental theorem of calculus again. Okay, that's the second derivative. What's the third derivative? Well, the derivative of negative, I can pull that out in front, ignore that. The derivative of f of x is f prime of x. What this is saying is the third derivative of g is just equal to the negative of the first derivative of x. How does that answer the question? Well, if g is three times continuously differentiable, if g triple prime of x exists, what is the greatest integer n for which f must be n times continuously differentiable? f prime of x must exist because it's equal to this thing which exists, which exists. f double prime of x doesn't need to exist, but f prime of x does need to exist in order for the negative of that to be the same as this. So f must be differentiable at least one time. So the answer to this question would be one.